Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve the problem number one from the chapter of stress in the book of Mechanics of Material by R. C. Hibbler. In this problem, a shaft is given which is supported at point B and point C. At point B, there is a thrust bearing and at the point C, there is a general bearing. And in this problem, it is required to determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section at point E, which is exactly at the middle of the shaft. So let's solve this problem. To solve this problem, first of all, we have to draw the free body diagram of this shaft. Now let's draw the free body diagram of the shaft. So for example, this is the shaft. This is the A point. The starting point is the A point you here. This is the A point and this is the D point. The middle point is the E point. This middle point is the E point. And there is a bearing at point B and at point C. So as you know that in free body diagram we usually represent the forces which are acting on the body. So at point A there is a vertical downward force acted through a belt using the pulley which is acting downward so there is a vertical downward force at point A having intensity of the load as 400 pounds similarly there is a load at point D the intensity of the load is 800 pounds now due to the bearings at point B and at point C there would be the support reactions at in case of thrust bearing which is at the point B there would be two types of the reactions one in the horizontal direction and other in vertical direction because this is a thrust bearing and thrust bearing will not allow the shaft to move either in vertical direction or in horizontal direction it will not allow to move the shaft in vertical or horizontal direction it means at point B there would be the two type of the reactions one would be the vertical reaction and other would be the horizontal reaction so let's represent the vertical reaction as V B vertical at point B and there would be a horizontal reaction at point B and let's represent that with HP means the horizontal at point B similarly there would be a force at point C due to the general bearing and in general bearing there would be a only one reaction so over here there would be a only one reaction and this is point B and this is point this is point B and this is point C so there would be only vertical load over here that will be the reaction and I represent that with VC in free body diagram we also show the dimensions so the total length of the shaft is 16 feet 16 feet is the total length of the shaft and uh, the distance between the A and B point is 4 feet this distance is 4 feet distance and the distance between the B and C is 8 feet and the distance between the C and D point is 4 feet now in this problem it is required to determine the internal loadings acting on the cross section at point E so the E point is the middle point which is over here 
now at this point we have to determine the internal loadings it means we have to cut the section at point E and then whether we will take the left portion of the shaft or the right portion of the shaft but in this problem I am going to take the right portion of the shaft so when I will take the right portion of the shaft then I must be known to the unknown VC which is acting at the C point due to the general bearing so in a similar way if I would have been taking the left portion of the shaft then I must be familiar with the unknown reactions acting at the B point as I have taken the right portion so for right portion I should have been known to the value VC so in order to determine the value of VC I need to use the conditions of equilibrium the conditions of equilibrium are being used in this shaft in order to de determine the value of VC I will apply the third condition of equilibrium which is the summation of all moments acting at a point in a body equal to zero so I will apply the that condition of equilibrium at point B it means summation of all forces sorry not forces but moments acting at point B equal to zero so I would be taking rightward moment as positive or clockwise moment as positive so then I will be going through all the moments which is being acting uh, at the point B so the major advantage of taking the point B is that the two reactions which are VB and HB are actually passing through the point B it means their moment would be zero so ultimately then I will be having only one unknown which is VC so from that equation I can then determine the value of the VC so let's solve this so first of all let's see how much moment is being created due to the downward force of 400 pounds which is acting at a distance of 4 feet from B point so and it will have an uh, anti-clockwise moment as we have taken clockwise moment as positive so anti-clockwise moment would be then negative the value would be 400 multiplied by the 4 now let's see how much amount of uh, moment the VC will create about point B as you can see from here that uh, the moment created by VC about point B would be anti-clockwise and uh, as clockwise has been taken as positive so anti-clockwise would be negative and the magnitude of the moment would be calculated as the force which is VC it is unknown multiplied by the moment arm the moment arm is actually the distance between the point about which we are calculating which is the B point and the line of action of force of VC and that distance would be 8 feet it means 8 and now in the last we have a downward force of magnitude 800 pounds which is acting downward at point D now due to this force the moment created at point B would be clockwise as you know that we have taken clockwise as positive it means it will have an, a positive value the magnitude would be determined as the load which is 800 pounds multiplied by the distance which is 12 feet 8 plus 4 the distance between B to D is 12 feet so 12 feet would be the moment arm so the assumption would be equal to 0 so from here you can have the value of VC and when you will calculate it you will have the value of VC as thousand pounds now coming back to the actual question of the problem that is we have to determine the internal loadings at the cross section E we have to determine the internal loadings at point E and I have taken the rightward side of the shaft 
So if I draw the right side of the shaft then it can be drawn as for example this is the shaft the starting point is the E point this is the E point and at the middle there is a C point and at the end we have D point and the forces at point D and C are 800 pounds acting downward and at the point C the value is 1000 pounds acting upward. So as we have to determine the internal loadings at point E by internal loadings we mean that whenever we cut a section throughout the body there would be three reactions so those three reaction would be one reaction would be the reaction perpendicular to the section let's represent that with NE means normal to the E section the other reaction would be the reaction parallel to the cross section and let's represent that with VE and third reaction would be the moment at that point in this case it is E means ME so in this problem actually these three are required these three are required these three are the internal loadings at point E so in this question what we are required we are required to determine NE we are required to determine VE and we are also required to determine ME so all these three are the internal loadings at cross section E so to determine these three unknowns we would be using the conditions of equilibrium so these are the three unknown and three conditions of equilibrium can be used to determine all these three variables so using the first condition of equilibrium the first condition of equilibrium is that summation of all forces acting in x direction equal to zero so for example this is the x direction and this direction the vertical direction is y direction so sum, sum of all forces acting in x direction equal to zero and if you look at the section uh, if you look at the body we have only one horizontal reaction S our reaction in x direction is only one so ne then would be equal to zero so we have got our first internal loading and its value is zero pounds now using the second condition of equilibrium that is summation of all forces acting in y direction equal to zero so there are three forces acting in this body and on this body which is along the y direction those are if I take the vertical upward as positive then VE which is acting vertically upward would be positive the thousand force which is acting at C point will also be positive because it is vertically upward but the force which is acting at point D is downward so downward would be taken as negative so when you solve it you will have the VE value as minus 200 pounds so now we have got the second unknown negative value of V shows that the supposed direction of V would be altered means it will become downward its actual direction would be then downward now we have got the second unknown which is VE
Now to determine the third unknown Me, we would be using the third condition of equilibrium which is the summation of all moments acting at a point equal to zero. So for example sum of all moments acting at point E equal to zero. If I'm taking the, that point is E point and I'm considering that the count, uh, clockwise moment as positive then the moment acting at point E as I have considered that as a clockwise moment so then the magnitude for that would be Me positive Me and the moment created due to thousand force would be and it will have an anti-clockwise moment so anti-clockwise moment would be negative magnitude would be thousand multiplied by the distance between the point about which you are calculating to the line of action of force so that is 4 feet now in the last there would be a moment created by the 800 force acting at point D the magnitude for that would be as it will have the clockwise moment and clockwise moment is being taken as positive so its value would be positive and the magnitude would be calculated as 800 multiplied by the distance between E to D which is 8 equal to 0 so when you will solve this equation in this equation only one is unknown which is Me so you will, got, you will get the value of Me as minus 2400 pounds fit or you can say minus 2.4 Kips fit. So this is the third unknown or the third internal loading acting at point E. Again this negative sign shows that whatever we have assumed the direction of moment its direction would be altered. It means the moment acting at point E will not be clockwise but it will be anti-clockwise moment. So actual direction for the moment at point E would be anti-clockwise. So this is the third unknown. So this is the answer of the problem. This is also the answer. This one and this one. So this is all related to this problem number one from the chapter of stress. Thank you for watching this video.